For the majority of my life, I held the opinion that the scientific worldview was for the most part uncontested within itself. And even though I'm a Christian and believe in God as the creator of the universe and the author of life, I never thought that science itself left any space for God. But there's a huge debate happening on the internet and it's shining a light on origin of life science and it's exposing some holes in the very foundation of some of these theories. I want to show you today how one of the leading scientists in the field of origin of life cracked under pressure and admitted that the scientific world is clueless when it comes to answering this question. Where did life come from? In part one of this video, James Storr puts forth the primordial soup model as it's taught in schools and he does not hold back on his opinion about this model. Let's have a look. When one looks at a typical textbook, one will see some prehistoric pond and molecules and those molecules coming together and forming a cell and those cells coming together and some slithering creature coming out of this pond. That is fallacious. There is no truth in that. Okay, so we can clearly tell from that that James is not a fan of the primordial soup model as a scientific explanation for life. But in the next clip, taken from The Unbelievable Show, we have Justin Brealey put this exact same model in front of a leading scientist in the field, Lee Cronin, and he has a completely different response. Let's have a look. Okay, so there was some kind of primordial soup mm -hmm. billions of years ago on the surface of Earth chemicals swimming around, maybe bolts of lightning going off, uh, and somehow something happened and poof, you've got your first sort of very simple cell or mm -hmm. something uh, swimming around in the ocean. Is that view essentially correct? So you're not wrong. Your GCSE chemistry is not, is not too bad at all. Okay. <laughs> so two scientists with completely different takes on this primordial soup model. After this interview with Lee Cronin went up on the internet, James Storr puts out his response and it's quite interesting because he raises some very important points about how scientists present this model to the public and the media and it has affected the minds of everyday people for probably hundreds of years. Whoa! You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Your GCSE chemistry is not too bad at all. So you see, here is a man who learned something in high school and it's being underscored as not being too bad at all. That model, a few lightning strikes and all of a sudden, poof, a cell forms and that's how life began. And Lee said, not too bad at all. And that's why the world is confused. And Dennis Noble, who was sitting right there, made not a single comment to clarify the situation. Didn't say anything. Just let it go. And this is why people are so confused. Okay, well, how confused are they? There was a recent survey regarding the primordial soup concept. The survey was drafted and conducted by John Narcom, assistant professor of marketing at Arkansas Tech University. The question was asked, do you believe the following is true or false? Scientists researching the origin of life have created simple life forms from scratch. That is, in the laboratory experiments that approximate Earth's early atmosphere, scientists have mixed chemicals believed to exist before the first life forms to successfully create simple life forms such as bacteria. 72% of the people thought that was true. Let me enlighten you. Nowhere close. Nowhere close. If that were true, whoever did that would have gotten a Nobel Prize. There would have been Nobel Prizes granted to that very, very quickly. Nobody's ever come close to that. Okay, who are these people? Well, the age ranges are listed there, but the average age was 38, so in their right mind. Sex, about half male, half female. Highest level of education. Interestingly, 80% of them hold college degrees, either from an associate's degree all the way up to doctoral degrees. All right, so, so there is real misconception. It is taught in high schools. That is what people are still taught. It may even be taught beyond that. And that is the conception, the misconception of many people. So it was not my imagination to have said what I said. This is the issue. This stuff is being taught in schools and sold to the media as facts. But there are some very reputable scientists like James Dore 
who is standing up to expose the holes in the science. So, after this internet response to Lee Cronin's interview, Justin Brearley decides to get both of these guys on the show and the debate gets really intense, okay? I'll put the link to the entire debate in the comments, but for the purpose of this video, I just want to show you how Lee Cronin, when confronted and questioned about the actual science, he has no other option but to admit that the scientific world cannot explain the origin of life. Let's go. Well, today on the show, it's round two debating the origins of life. James Tor and Lee Cronin join me on the show today. Now, in November last year, I brought you an unbelievable discussion on how on earth did life begin, featuring Lee Cronin, whose Glasgow lab is working to crack the mystery of the origins of life. Now, Lee believes his research group is on the cusp of giving a purely natural explanation for how inorganic chemicals turned themselves into the first self-replicating form of life. Okay, so that's just the introduction, a little bit of a recap. Um, you can see Lee sitting there, smiling, agreeing with everything that he says. Wonderful. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip, like I said, I'm not going to show the whole debate, but I'm just going to show you this checkmate moment um, where it gets really interesting. Um, let's have a look. Where is the evidence for this? And, and I'm like, this is the type of extrapolation that I'm talking about from one of the premier people in the world in origin of life. And I'm saying, okay, you got evidence for me? Help me. Give me the evidence for that, Lee. Give me the evidence. I'd love to have it. I think we both agree. Planet Earth formed. Rocks, simple chemistry, no life, right? We don't know all the details of that. But then within a few hundred million years, there's evidence in the fossil record that life formed simple cellular life. Those two facts are not, as far as I know, disputed. So Lee is basically just saying that we know that at some point Earth was without life and then at some point there was life. He's not bringing an explanation to how that life emerged to the table. And James agrees with him on the statement that life emerged somehow. But if science claims that the origin of life can be naturally explained without intelligent design, they actually have to explain it, but they can't. Those two facts are not, as far as I know, disputed by those, the science, those, science Those are not contestable. Community. How we got from the point A to point B? Absolutely. We're but no, I didn't clueless. say okay. we knew. Right. That's so the so we're agreeing. Okay. We, so we, he, you and I agree, Lee, that how we got from the simple molecules to life, it happened, but we don't know how. Okay. Exactly. So let, let, now. Okay, did you catch that? Lee Cronin just admitted that the scientific world does not know how we went from point A, no life, to point B, life. Let's watch that again. I did not say <laughs> we knew. Right. That's so the so point. we're agree. Okay. We, so we, he, you and I agree, Lee, that how we got from the simple molecules to life, it happened, but we don't know how. Exactly. So Guys, this stuff is so interesting to me. I am really grateful for people like James Storm, who is contesting this and is in fact shaking the boat of the scientific community. I'll link below to a series where he challenges absurd scientific claims in the utmost detail. I'm not a scientist, but James Storm is, and he is qualified. He can understand the papers, and he's pointing those papers back at them and asking them for explanations. I'm not saying that James is perfect and that he is the source of absolute truth, neither does he make that claim. In fact, he only claims that we do not scientifically know where life came from. By faith, I know, and if you're a Christian, by faith, I know you know <laughs> where life came from. But what we have here is a huge step from what is being taught in schools. My personal belief is that the science will one day point to God as the creator of the universe and life. But for some reason, for the past decade or so, the scientific world has been very afraid to even consider the possibility of the existence of a creator behind life and the universe. That's a completely different topic for a different day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.